Hi folks, I'm Paul. Welcome back to Recycle Model Railways. Today we finish Uncle Jed's train. So, if you remember, this was Uncle Jed's little 060 tank. Um, <coughs> as I said in the previous video, you can hear the motor buzzing, but it wasn't doing a great deal else. Um, so, I decided I would go and buy this. Peter's Spares XO3 replacement motor. Really impressed with it when I saw it in the shop when Peter showed me how it worked. Really impressed. And I thought, well, I can fix the XO3 by servicing it and what have you. Pulled the brushes out, the brushes were shot to bits, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go and buy a motor because I really want to put one in. So here we are, we've got the motor here. What have we done to this? Well, I've saved you boring, repetitive stuff. We've had the wheels off, we've cleaned everything, we've cleaned the contact strips, only on the one side, obviously. But we've given them all a good clean, we've cleaned all the mess out of the driving cog here, give the frame a general clean up. <coughs> um, the body shell at the moment is behind me uh, I give it a good brush up um, to clean it because it was a bit dusty and messy uh, I've took off what was left of the bumpers because I've bought four new ones from Peter's um, but before I fit the bumpers um, I've given it a coat of lacquer because it was looking a little bit lacklustre not something I'd particularly always want to do every time but I just thought it's going to look better with a bit of a coat of lacquer. So we give it a quick spray job. It's behind me at the moment drying. Um, it does look a lot better. And it'll look even better when we chuck some new buffers on it. And a couple of the figures that I've got. Um, obviously, loco crew. So, plan for today. Get this on. We've already had a little look. Um, I've seen Double O Bill do this already. He had a couple of difficulties with his motor um, when he had it in, tipping up ever so slightly like this. He had it tipping up, not as much as that, I'm exaggerating it. And he had to bend it down a little bit, what have you. And he did say that it seemed to be dependent on the chassis, etc. Well, I put this one in and it, it fits perfectly, so I've got no issues. I have looked at the support plate that goes on here uh, and after looking at it um, I'm very much in agreement with Bill um, don't quite know what that is I'm very much in agreement with Bill in that I'm not 100% personally convinced about putting this when I get all of it this uh, on the back of the motor without doing something about this top bit because that little hole at the top if you can, I'll have to put my glass on so I can see if you can see there's a little hole at the top as you can see no it's not coming out is it right I'll come back hang on right I'm back now finished messing about so this here is the plate that goes behind the motor uh, fastens down through there and this just sits over the back of the motor like that now I've got no issues with the bottom part here touching the frame because that's the ground but I, I'm concerned about this because this is the power in and if you look that hole is has the ability to touch the contact or if your wire isn't very carefully put in there again it could touch and this is your grounding plate so I'm going to remove a little bit of this top section here just to make me feel happier about life um, I'm going to do that I'll cut it out I'll mount the engine in um, we'll cut this here, take that off there, re reset it, solder it onto that, put this on, 
bolt it down and then I'm going to give it a little test because I'm I don't know whether I need to wire to run a wire from here on the chassis block to that pin I'm thinking that technically the pin goes through there into there so and if it's got a good ground on that on the back of the body it should it should be fine but me being me <coughs> and you get warts and all I'll bring you back before I've tried it and then we'll put some pout with it and see what happens and if it doesn't work fine we'll put the ground wire on it but I kind of think this is going to work we'll be back take two because I've tried this once and my battery died <laughs> typical I've done that with fight with everything this afternoon folks soldering tips at wooden solder extension leads that weren't long enough to do what I was trying to do a Hornby controller this piece of crap that I bought going in the bin I'm going to get up in the loft, find my Hammond and Morgan and bin that piece of rubbish. Anyway, I did get ahead of myself. I put it on the on the test track. Uh, I forgot to switch the camera on. So, I can already confirm to you that I was wrong about this. That is not sending a negative through to that terminal. And I'm guessing it's because that this actual L bracket thing here doesn't touch that. I did cut off the top of it because I didn't like how close it got to the live. So I put this now on here straight on the negative. Let's turn it on and hope it works. Oh, there we go. It sends a little. I'm unsure. Could be just the old battered train rails. Uh, a bit of speed up and she seems to be fine. But when I bring her down. Yeah, I might need to look at the. <laughs> nice. I might need to look at the, um, that was soldering cases of sort of camera. I might need to move the gear and down or up a little bit, the worm, sorry, just to stop that. But she's running, she's running, I mean that's what, probably a third of the power. Um, if I turn it full on, there's no way can my Uncle Jeb run that on his track. It will be just too fast. He's got about, what's his layout? Might be eight foot long and three foot wide, something like that. But by the time it gets to the corner, you're not going to get the controller fast enough to turn it down. And it'll just literally shoot straight off the end. So, that's where we are. We've now got it rolling. Um, I'm going to have a mess about with this worm here. See if I can't do some about this work, 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 work that it's doing. Um, I just think some might be off a little bit there. I know the quartering's fine because I did check the quartering before. But anyway, I'll turn it off while I faff on because it's really hard to faff on and while you're on the camera and da 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 da. I'll explain to you what happens and what I did when I come back. Okay, I'm finally back after a lot of faffing about. Probably a good job that I didn't have it recording because I don't think people could have cut with the swearing. Anyway, where did I get there with this? Well, first things first, I can't prove anything because that crappy Hornby controller that's supposed to be hardly ever used has packed up completely, so I now have no power. Anyway, um. I've requartered it, that didn't solve the lurching motion that was going on. Um, I've slackened off the centre pins a little bit, I've had the wheels off, I've cleaned them again, I've re-greased them, put them back on, put the rods back on, oiled it all again, probably too much oil by now I would think. Um, <coughs> I even put 
a new uh, the new track pickup wire from the plate underneath to the back of the motor. I put a new one of those in. Um, I've put the black wire on the negative side of the motor down to the pin that goes through. Um, as you can see by the shell, she's a little bit shiny. Um, I've done the bumpers, the bumpers, are we Norman? The buffers on the back end and a new set of buffers on the front end and as you can see we've got one there and we've got the one there hanging out. So all in all she does run but what I don't know is if all the messing about with the quartering and everything else uh, and slackening the the bars off whether it's made a difference because I've got no juice to try uh, I also don't have one of them 9 volt batteries that I keep seeing everybody using so all I've got to do now is put the the NAF Hornby couplings back on um, and that's that one finished I am going to get the the, the class 52 back out and stick a couple of crew in there um, so I'll try and get them done before I call it a day but I, if I get them done in get them in because I want to get this finished get the Hornby couplings back on get it wrapped up into a box and then get crew in this and then I'll come back to you as long as it's not too late because I want my tea right so I'm going to wrap this video up We've got the couplers back on front and back. I replaced one. Didn't realise when I took them off that it was badly damaged, like the hook had gone. So I put my new hook on. <coughs> Pardon me. He's got new hooks on. He's got new buffers. This thing's been stripped, and I mean stripped completely. Everything's been cleaned. It's had a couple of coats of lacquer, like I said, just to bring it up the spec a little bit. New buffers, two crab co, brand new spank, brand spanking new motor. It's had everything done. I think I put enough timing on this. I've got time for that. That can be a job in the morning. I'm just going to stick two crew in it, and that's it. But you'll notice this black LMS that's sitting behind it. Now this was well, still is a mystery. This arrived in the post today. Um, now yes I have been buying some stuff on eBay but I definitely didn't buy this I even went on eBay to double check that I hadn't bought this and I hadn't which I was fairly sure I wouldn't have because it doesn't really appeal to me anyway it's here I have no idea how I have no idea where from so if any of you guys out there have sent me this because I know my address is on YouTube somewhere from someone who sent me stuff previously um, if any of you guys sent me this thank you very much uh, because other than one of you lot sending me this I ain't got a clue where it's come from um, no letters with it nothing um, just a town and an address which is in Wales of where it's well not an address just a town and an address general postcode so like I said if any of you guys sent me it, thank you very much it looks it is a lemur and it looks like it's a HO lemur if you look at that stood next to that there's a significant difference in the size significant so what am I going to do with that mm, I don't know yet I mean well, a lot of it will depend on if I can get the wheels to sit on the track I think I can um, it's got a ring field in there it has got or did have the attachment to pick up off the front wheels as well the Lima ring field things are pretty good as long as you know what to do with the motors to quieten them down um, so I'm kind of thinking that I'm probably going to do something with it and my immediate thought is I did a video a long long time ago about Caledonian coaches that I had that I kept picking up when I was doing these job lot purchases on eBay and I'm kind of thinking 
They are a little bit tall and somebody said you're supposed to cut them down. So I'm thinking maybe if I chop the roofs off them, repaint them, and this as well, in some kind of matching livery, and was to put it eventually someday on a layout, um, as like, uh, you know, a little old private shunting line that goes from point A to point B and then turns around and comes back, something like that. It's here, it's arrived, it's out of scale, but I don't throw things away. You know, um, if someone sent me this in error from somewhere, well, there you go. If someone has sent me it, uh, could have sent me a, a little note saying, hi mate, I've sent you this just so I could have thanked you. But anyway, I'm not going to toss it. I, I will do something with it. Where in the queue it'll get done, I don't know because my other Flying Scotsman unit arrived today so I've now got four tenders two Flying Scotsmans with motor and one Flying Scotsman shell um, thank you for all those who passed a comment I greatly greatly appreciate all of that um, um, it's nice when people get involved and give you their opinion on what they think um, very very much appreciated um, I know not everybody can be bothered to take the time but it's nice when people do because then we're all you know working this project together if you like oops um so yeah thanks for your comments folks I appreciate it very much and uh, thank you for those of you who took the time to put those comments together anyway I'm gonna go because tea's arrived and it's time to sign off thank you very much everybody for watching i hope this wasn't too boring um it was just me working on uncle jed's but the next project is these the flying scotsman's obviously the first part will be get them stripped right take care everyone see you again bye bye just a quick cut in here folks a uh, little bit of an update on two things um Sorry I couldn't show you Uncle Jed's train on my test track, as you know that crappy controller packed up. Um, but both the trains have been taken back to Uncle Jed, uh, it was done yesterday. Uh, he's had them both on his uh, layout, both running absolutely spot on, he's over the moon with them. So it makes me happy, Uncle Jed's happy with them and that's all that matters. And as for the black train, I found out where it come from and I don't, I'm not keeping it. One of the guys who had bought a Scotsman off, by error, had printed the wrong address label off on his next sale and sent it to me. Anyway, he's been in touch and asked if I don't mind returning it, which obviously I will. Uh, I'm not the type that would try and rob something off somebody. Um, so we're going to get it wrapped up after the Easter weekend and get it back to him. But just thought I'd update you. Both the trains, especially with the new motoring, I was right, it's too powerful for Uncle Jed's track if you turn it full up, but it does remarkably well. Um, some of you might have seen a video I did before where I'm in some gold coal wagons and I had um, some water slide transfer paper and I made up the name of his dad's coal business years ago, put them on the side of the trucks. Uh, I'm now going to look for a little 040 and paint it all up in black and label that up likewise so that he's got an engine that's very close as I can get to what used to pull the trucks into their yard many, many years ago. So look for that one. It's one up and coming. I need to go on eBay now and find one. See you in a bit. Bye bye.